Hello, I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, just with more tech, can you all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Um, thank you that we can do this today. I'm very excited to talk about this amazing topic. But before we dive into this technical perspective, as Julia called it, uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mauritz Andrea. Um, I am the head of research of Deep Metas. We are a small AI company. We are we have only funded a few months ago, but we have uh, some we have seen some rapid grow um, and want to use AI for the better of the world. We want to use AI in ways that improves the people, the lives of people. And we found that XAI offers many great ways to do this since it enables machine learning algorithms to work in health care, for example, or other critical decision-making processes. Okay, now let's dive into it. Um, the, the first thing I want to talk about is the state of uh, the current state of machine learning algorithms. And in general, I would say that there are two broader categories we can talk about. The first one is we have comparably simple machine learning models. Um, such uh, one example for that would be a decision tree, as you can see on the right. A decision tree is a structure that is learned from data. In that case, the output uh, would be if the person should play soccer and the given input data is the weather, the humidity and the, wi uh, the wind. Um, the idea is that the algorithm learns to build up this to build up this tree and then we can derive at the decision for new input data. And um, as you can see, this um, this system um, is sorry. There is a small mistake in the in the slides. Um, the system is explainable, but it is not powerful. It uh, can ex it is it is easily understandable how we derive at a certain decision, but we can't hold as much information in there as we can in more complex models. For example. Um, deep neural networks, uh, as you can see on the right here. Uh, here is the marking. Here's the marking correct. Uh, they are much more powerful, and those techniques are the basis for mo for most of the modern achievements in machine learning. They offer great capabilities in image uh, classification, on uh, text generation or classification, and in so many more environments. I mean, I could I could spend my entire time talking about the applications. Uh, where deep learning provides amazing solutions just from the last 10 years. And the technique is amazingly powerful, but it is very hard to understand what is happening, even for a person that knows what, uh, what the model should do. Because if you look here in the tree, you can easily go through the steps and say, okay, what is the weather? It's cloudy. Okay, I should go play soccer. If the weather is sunny, we have the second question, but we know exactly where the decision comes from. On the other hand, this model is pretty complex and each of those nodes and edges store different values that are then processed from the left to the right with the given input to the output. And those models are amazingly powerful, but in their basic form, not explainable. So the problem is we have one, we have a category of models that are simply not powerful enough to handle modern big data tasks in general. And we have models that are powerful enough, but they can't always be trusted as we will see later in the presentation. So the idea is that explainable AI should offer the best of both worlds. We want to use explainable AI to explain how machine learning models derive at their decisions, while also being able to do so on complex machine learning models, like those deep neural networks. And this is the, the basic summary for this, for this concept. Simple machine learning models are explainable, but not powerful enough. Complex machine learning models aren't explainable anymore with, due to their high number of parameters and the way they are built up, but they are amazingly powerful. And the idea is if we now could achieve explainability through explainable AI systems, then we could use those ideas on the complex models and achieve explainable and powerful models. And there have been some amazing breakthroughs those, those last few years. And, um, but before we dive too deep into, into those, 
uh, they are a bit theoretical. I think it is a good idea to see why it is important because when you train a machine learning model, you have scores like a loss or an accuracy. But the, the problem is sometimes this might not be enough because it only shows that the system is learning something, but not that the system is learning what you intended it to learn. And therefore we can look at this. It is a, uh, it is a very simple idea. We have an image classification model that takes as an input either a picture of a husky or of a wolf and is trained to classify what, what kind of animal it is simply based on the image. Um, we, have to, we have to note that in the data set they used, most huskies were in a greener environment, like from, from, the, from the, the background was more green, more forest and so on, while the wolves were mostly shown in snowy regions. What you see here is the picture of a husky in a more snowy region. And the machine learning model they tested failed to classify this husky. And when they applied an explainable AI technique to see how what the system um, what the system focuses on when making the decision, it looks like this. Those are the pixels the system actually focuses on the most when making the decision. And as you can see, the system basically only focuses on the snow and then derives at the decision that it is a wolf. And it simply has learned the correlation that most of the wolves in the data set are in snowy regions. The problem with that is that if you only look at how good the model performs from an accuracy or loss point of view, then the system is classifying most, most animals correctly. But it is not learning what we intended it to learn. And that is a big problem in especially critical areas. Because if the system we want to we want to apply in a field where human human lives are at stake, then we can't risk that a model does sh such a mistake and simply learns a stupid correlation that was not intended for the classification. So the model did everything right, but it learned the wrong thing, or it learned it did not learn the thing we wanted it to learn. And that is that is a problem one would never have seen if they would not have applied this explainable AI system that has revealed what pixels the system focuses on when doing the decision. Uh, how one of those techniques uh, work um, will be will be discussed in in um, the the next example. And uh, it is one of, uh, it is again a very typical example of um, the applications of explainable AI. What you can see here is a picture of a horse in a forest with water and the person sitting on the back of the horse. And um, uh, colored with this yellow, there is a text in the bottom left. Now, if we build a machine learning model to classify pictures of animals, or different, uh, like a lot of different things. We could we could uh, throw in many different uh, things. We want to we want to label. Um, this was one of the one of the pictures, and what they did is they built a classification model, just like in the in the prior work, um, but here with far more different uh, different outputs the system could choose, and uh, then they applied an explainable AI technique called layer-wise relevance propagation. And we will now have a look into what this technique does. Again, this is not the only explainable AI technique out there. There are a lot of amazing techniques, but this is one of the, one of, uh, it is a new one and it is, um, it is very, it is intentionally designed to work well with the overall structure of deep neural networks, which seems like a pretty promising way to go. Um, this is the overall structure, and don't worry, it, uh, at first glance, it probably looks, looks a bit overwhelming. But what you see at the top, the, uh, the, the uh, black part, is the forward computation. This is the simple computation you do in a neural network. Uh, you have different layers with activation functions, where the input signal travels from the first layer, like those first three nodes, to the second one, where it gets updated and it goes through till it reaches the output layer. So when we, for us, we take our image of the, of the horse as input and feed it into the system. 
Um, then we run it through all those nodes and end up with an output that signals if the system thinks this is a horse or not. So we have this question, does this, is, is, uh, how sure is this system that this is a horse shown on the picture? And in the next step, we go backwards through those computation steps. We start at the output and jump back one layer at a time. And the idea is that the uh, that we have a certain relevance. Each entry, each node has a relevance. And the relevance is how much does it influence the values in the next layer? So how high is the relevance for the uh, for the prior uh, for the one uh, for the layer one before the last one Com uh, when computing the last uh, the, the the output um, and we do those calculations backwards as you can see with this red flow um, and each time separate the the relevance onto the different nodes that come before this and when doing this step by step. We, uh, we, at the end, end up with the relevance of each of the inputs. And for this picture, the inputs are simply the pixel values. So what we get is, uh, the, we get for each pixel the score, how much did the system focus on this pixel when making its decision? This is what we calculate in this overall process. And for this picture, this looks like this. We will have it uh, zoomed up here. Um, and what you can see on the right is you, they color marked what the intensity of the pixels was in a certain area. And red means it is highly, it is focused highly onto this field. And um, as you can see, the main part the system focuses on when doing the classification is it focuses on this text. But how can this be? Because obviously, when you when I show one of you a picture of a horse and ask you, is this a horse? You will probably say, yes, this is a horse. And if I ask you why, you will probably be able to point to the horse. But here the problem is that the input data for all the horses has this text at the bottom left. And thus the system learns simply this correlation again. Just like in the first one, it learned the snow and the background is the is the important thing when doing it the classification. Um, it here only learns that it has it should focus on this text because when all of the horse pictures have such a text or most of them, it is a very good strategy to always say if there is text, it is a horse. But this is again the system makes a makes a good move because it learns something. The only problem is it does not learn what we expected it to learn. And explainable AI in that field allows us to see such things before we apply the systems in critical situations. We can test the systems again and then see, okay, does the system learn what we want it to learn? And is it able to make reasonable decisions? So this combination is, is, is the, the key point why explainable AI offers such a great value in fields like medtech. And um, one, one more thing about this example, they have, they have, uh, they have gone even further with, with this problematic. And this is what you can see here. On the left, you can see what does the system predict for each of those pictures. And for the, for the top left picture, we discussed it, it predicted that it is a horse and it focuses only on the text in the bottom left. For the one right at the top right, it also only focuses on this text they have added into a picture of a car. And this completely fueled the system. And this is also a major problem that when it has learned something we did not expect it to learn, adding such a thing as a text which usually should not should not uh, lead to a different decision when you only should, when a human, for example, would have looked at a car. But in that case, it made sense for the system to learn it simply because all of the data had such a, such a, such a correlation inside. And as you can see, if they remove the text from the bottom left for all of those pictures, then the system from there on did not predict horse anymore. So the prediction of horse is basically the same at that point for if there is text at the bottom left. And this is the, one, of the, one of the major advantages explainable AI offers in this field.
Um, so this, uh, I will, I will come to my summary about this. Um, the major point is by running such techniques over and over again and seeing what the system learns and not only trusting that it learns the right thing, the things a human would consider when looking at those pictures, but we rather test it and really see what have, has the system learned. Then we can ma manage to use powerful AI take, uh, techniques in decisions that are, that are uh, where, where human lives are at stake because this allows us to, to bring much more trust towards the system because we then understand much better what it does and how it works. The second part is we can even use the explanation instead of the decision as an output for the overall system. What does that mean? As you can, can see from the, from the prior, prior pictures, um, we have this heat map at the end where we know what did the system focus on when making a classification. And in the presentation, Husam will, do, uh, will, um, will have at the end, um, we talk about an idea we had for, for a product at DeepMeters where we use the explanation, so the parts the system focuses on, rather than the classification of the model. And uh, it is a, I really like the concept and I'm very excited to hear it from Husam again. And I hope so are you. And the last point is we have a better understanding. This is more theoretical, but obviously if we better understand how models perform, then that helps much more at the development of, uh, of, of models in the future. And it also helps for picking, picking data smart and not simply expecting the model to learn what a human would learn. So thank you very much, and I hope we can do this again. It was very much fun, and now I'm very excited to hear the presentation of the others, and thank you very much.